In Florida, the state that you are a resident of, there's an abortion related amendment on yeah. the ballot to overturn the six week ban in mm -hmm. Florida. How are you going to vote on that? Well, I think the six week is too short. Uh, it has to be more time. And so that's and I've told them that I want more weeks. So you'll vote in favor of the amendment. I'm, I'm voting that I am going to be voting that we need more than six weeks. And under the Trump administration, your government will pay for or your insurance company will be mandated to pay for all costs associated with IVF treatment, fertilization for women. Here's what he told our Brian Yenis Friday about how pro-lifers who are increasingly publicly and privately talking about their frustrations. Uh, here's what the president told Brian Yenis. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think they feel betrayed at all. They love me. I'm the one that got rid of Roe v. Wade. But here's what one prominent pro-life activist, Lila Rose, told Politico. She says, I think it's foolish what he's doing. It's politically unwise. It may cost him the election, and it's morally unprincipled as well. Right now, it's all about turnout. If he wants to galvanize his base, he needs to stop trying to pander to Kamala Harris's base because they're never going to vote for him anyway. Um, she says no one owns the pro-life vote. She says, listen, she doesn't think a bunch of people are going to go vote for Harris, but she may stay home. She's telling other people to stay home. In a race this tight, can you afford to offend that constituency? It finally happened. Donald Trump actually pissed off some of his own supporters by flying a little bit too close to the sun on the issue of abortion. Now, he's obviously pandering to undecided voters because he understands that the Republican Party's position on this issue is a major liability for them in this election. So he's trying to get the party to moderate on this issue while also doing a bit of a balancing act himself, where he's trying to move to the center on this issue while not going so far to the center to alienate his own force per their base. Now, you would think that they would give him a little bit more grace since he's the guy that delivered the biggest win for the force further movement of our lifetimes. And I think that some of them are giving him grace, but the problem is that he's just gone too far in the opposite direction now, and they're pissed off. Now, it's not just, you know, him saying that six weeks isn't enough and supporting government funded IVF treatment, which one could argue sounds a little bit like socialism. It's also his feigned opposition to the Comstock Act because Politico reports, quote, after months of avoiding specifics, Trump told CBS News on Monday that he would not use the 150 year old Comstock Act to ban mail delivery of abortion drugs if elected in November, adding the federal government should have nothing to do with this issue. Now, here's how that went over. Quote, many prominent conservatives and anti-abortion activists were outraged by the remark, calling it nonsensical and cowardly and warning that it could dampen turnout and enthusiasm on the right heading into a close election. Quote, it's not a pro-life position. It's not an acceptable position, and it does not provide the contrast on this issue to the degree that we have had in the past between him and Kamala Harris, said Tony Perkins, president of the Family Research Council. What President Trump is doing is suppressing his own support. Quote, unfortunately, it seems like Trump doesn't care about the pro-life base anymore, said Lila Rose, the founder of the anti-abortion group Live Action. He came out recently and said he supported access to these deadly abortion drugs, and that is horrific. Now, I just want to pause for a moment to emphasize how catastrophic this is for Donald Trump. He is facing backlash from the likes of Tony Perkins and Lila Rose. These are some of the most prominent leaders in the forced brother movement in the country. So them publicly attacking the Republican nominee for president would be like if Planned Parenthood attacked the Democratic nominee for president. It's almost inconceivable, right? But they are now attacking him. And what they say holds weight among other forced birthers. So this is bad. And this tension between Trump and the anti-abortion movement has been building for some time now. For example, after J.D. Vance said that Trump would veto any national abortion ban that came across his desk, Lila Rose warned that he risks losing forced birthers unless he changes his tune on this issue. And she also tweeted, if you don't stand for pro-life principles, you don't get pro-life votes. But she's not an outlier because prominent Trump supporter John Cardillo took to Twitter to express his disappointment as well, writing, I don't care how you spin it. Trump told NBC he's voting for a Soros-funded unrestricted abortion amendment in Florida. Now, gay conservative influencer Gay Patriot tweeted, Trump has destroyed both the conservative movement and the pro-life movement. He's done what even Barack Obama couldn't do. So they are pissed off. Now, Mike Pence decided to take the cowardly approach 
approach and responded by not invoking Trump's name directly, but rubbing salt in the wound, writing, I am pro-life. I don't apologize for it. Now, just to show you what rank and file Republicans are saying, this is one example. This is a user from Florida who's telling DeSantis to stop campaigning for Trump because of this, and she called his pivot a gut punch. Now, there's a lot of other examples of pissed off forced birthers, but I don't want to belabor this point any further. You get the point. They're mad. Now, it's true that the MAGA cult is a real thing, but these evangelicals, they're not necessarily part of the MAGA cult. There's a lot of overlap for sure. But the fact that so many of them are threatening to withhold their votes, that is no small thing. Listen, my parents were evangelical when I was growing up. And trust me when I say abortion is the number one issue for evangelicals, and it's not even close. This was the number one issue for my parents, and it was the number one issue for everyone else at the church. So this level of outrage is unsustainable for Trump. And I can't remember a time where so many evangelicals were this outraged by the Republican Party's nominee. And if enough evangelicals actually withheld their votes and they don't show up in November, that's it. It's over for Republicans. So he can't have this. Now, the backlash has essentially forced the Trump campaign to go into damage control mode, obviously, because they know how destructive it would be if he actually lost even a small amount of evangelicals. The question is, how can he possibly smooth things over by fucking up so badly and going so far in the opposite direction? And the answer is by doing a full 180, baby. So not only is he flip-flopping on Amendment 4 in Florida, but now he won't even say whether or not he'd veto a national abortion ban after trying to run away from the prospect of a national abortion ban. Now, he doesn't say anything explicit here, but nonetheless, his refusal to say either way what he would do is a big sign that he knows he fucked up. Voting yes or no on Amendment 4 in Florida. So I think six weeks, you need more time than six weeks. I've disagreed with that right from the early primaries when I heard about it. I disagreed with it. At the same time, the Democrats are radical because the nine months is just a ridiculous situation that where you can do an abortion in the ninth month. And, you know, some of the states like Minnesota and other states have it where you could actually execute the baby after birth. And all of that stuff is unacceptable. So I'll be voting no for that reason. Would you veto a federal abortion ban? I'm not going to have to think about it because it's working out so well right now. The states are doing it. It's a state's issue. I'm only asking that because J.D. Vance said that you would veto an abortion ban if it was sent to your desk. Well, what's happening is uh, you're never going to have to do it because it's being done by the states. The states are voting and the people are now getting a chance to vote. And this is the way everybody wanted it. He's voting for it, voting no. I mean, listen, that's one of the fastest, most brazen flip-flops I've seen in politics. Now, when it comes to how this 180 is being received by forced birthers. It's hard to say at this point. Some normally Christian Republicans are encouraged by this flip-flop, and they're seeing this as evidence that when you speak out against evil, it makes a difference. Others, they're not saying much. And I think that their silence is deafening. For example, Lila Rose and Tony Perkins have not given him credit to my knowledge. I looked at their Twitter timelines. They said they've said nothing. They're just tweeting about how abortion is bad. At least Lila Rose is not giving Trump credit for now saying, you know, I'm going to vote no on Amendment 4 in Florida. So I, I think that he swung too far to the center and now he's swinging too far back to the right by refusing to say whether or not he'd veto a national abortion ban. And at this point in time, I think that he's lost. He has no idea how to recalibrate on this issue. And now everyone is pissed off. But a member of Trump's team, Corey Lewandowski, is trotting out a different strategy than Donald Trump. Rather than, you know, walking back the comments, Corey Lewandowski is voter shaming. So let's go back to that first clip that we saw at the start of this video. And remember, he was asked about anti-abortion Republican activist Lila Rose, who threatened to stay home in November. So let's see how he responded to her threat. In a race this tight, can you afford to offend that constituency? Well, look, if she if she chooses to stay home, then by, you know, tacit endorsement, she's supporting uh, Kamala Harris, who has had a radical position on the issue of abortion. Many Democrats believe that you can have an abortion not only uh, on, up until the last week, but also in some cases after the baby's been born. What Donald Trump has said was, let's have the states decide. They, they are the laboratories of democracy. Let's turn this back. And that's what Roe v. Wade really did. And so we see across this country right now opportunities for individuals to go and vote at the ballot box of what they want to see transpire in their state. And every state 
state is going to look a little different. And Shannon, we have seen some relatively or very conservative states go to a position where women are giving opportunities uh, that you would not have expected because of that. But those states understand, whether it's Ohio or Kansas, that women have the opportunity to make their own decisions, and, and the states are allowing that to happen. So what Donald Trump has done and I think, by and large, the American people support this, is Roe v. Wade has been overturned because of his three Supreme Court nominees that are now sitting on the bench, and they put it back to the states, and it's a decision at the local level now. Well, and I will say that, to, to be clear, in there, a number of states, there is pregnancy, there is abortion allowed through pregnancy, and that includes a measure that Governor Tim Walz signed in Minnesota, but Democrats say they absolutely disavow the idea of infanticide or of a baby. That does survive an abortion, somehow their life being taken at that point. We can continue that debate um, because there are a number of states that do allow it through pregnancy. Um, but I think everybody agrees infanticide is illegal and wrong. No, your eyes and ears aren't deceiving you. You just heard a Fox News anchor actually fact check the infanticide lie that Republicans have been spreading about Democrats. But this idea that Democrats want to kill babies after they're born is necessary to Trump because it allows him to portray himself as a lesser evil to forced birthers. So that way, if they are dissatisfied with him, they'll be even more horrified by Harris's position and feel obligated to vote for him to stop infanticide. But I don't think that that hyperbole is convincing them because they're focused on the issues that they've always been focused on, stopping abortion drugs and stopping all abortions. So to them, there's really no discernible difference between a baby being aborted at, you know, after it's born and a zygote being aborted in four weeks. To them, there's no difference. So you can lie to them, but they're outraged either way and they want it all to stop. So Donald Trump is fundamentally disconnected from his base on this issue. And I think it's because he just doesn't care either way, right? He just is saying whatever he needs to to get elected. But as you saw, Corey Lewandowski is now scolding forced birthers and telling them that they're tacitly endorsing Kamala Harris if they don't support Donald Trump. Definitely a winning strategy, so keep it up, Corey. But damage control is now essential for the Trump campaign because of the mess that Trump made. And the problem is that his own allies don't even know how to defend him at this point because he's gone so back and forth, he's so all over the place that they really can't defend him in a meaningful or persuasive way. So they're kind of forced to just change the subject. For example, look at what Florida Congressman and Trump surrogate Byron Donalds did when he was asked about Trump's position on abortion. Part of the reason why you've seen the former president have a gut instinct of being cautious on this issue. I think he's been reported to have said uh, this was a problem in the 2022 midterm elections for Republicans. There's also where anti-abortion advocates are on this, which to some degree you've heard them over the course of the last several days be very frustrated uh, with where the former president is. Wish he would sound more like, as one told me, his first term version of Donald Trump. What do you say to those reliably Republican voters who are concerned on this issue? Uh, I would tell those voters in the state of Florida and around the country that President Trump's been very clear uh, when it comes to abortion, specifically to Florida. Uh, he thinks that the six-week ban is not enough weeks, uh, but at the same time, the ballot initiative is far too radical for the state of Florida. And so every voter in our state's having to make that decision. He's decided to vote no, just like I have and so many other Floridians. But I think it's important for voters in swing states to understand that the ballot initiative in Florida has no bearing on the cost of food in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan, or anywhere else. Dude dodged that shit like the Matrix. <laughs> Listen, you know, <clears throat> Mr. Trump has been uh, incredibly clear. He thinks that six weeks is not enough weeks. But uh, my God, has anyone seen the cost of groceries lately? Also, do you notice a little bit of a chill in the air? Hmm. I wonder if fall is arriving earlier this year. Also, have you tried out Black Myth Wukong? I hear it's a great game. It's just so sad because he's very clearly uncomfortable talking about this and wants to change the conversation because, you know, how do you defend Trump here if you're a campaign surrogate? There's really no good way to do that. And it's because Donald Trump has pissed off centrists that he's trying to win over and forced birthers. Because, you know, when you pander a little bit too hard and play it too safely and try to play both sides, you come off as inauthentic and desperate and both sides end up not knowing what to believe 
because you're obviously just saying whatever you think is going to help you get elected. But when it comes to my take and where I actually think that Trump stands, I do believe that Trump would sign a national abortion ban into law, and I think that he's still firmly in the forced brother camp. I say that because regardless of the rhetoric that he uses on the campaign trail, he governed as an anti-abortion extremist. Again, he delivered the reversal of Roe v. Wade, and I expect him to be no different if he gets elected again especially now that we have, you know, Project 2025 as a looming threat. Having said that, though, even though I believe that personally, I do hope that forced birthers still feel betrayed by him. And I do hope that they abandon him because that'd be great. I'm going to come. Ah, ah, come. Do not come. 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 Welcome, Welcome to the Come, come Zone. zone. 